seismosonic boom earthquakes are real. They're called super shear earthquakes. And they happen all around the world. One of them, for example, is the San Andreas Fault in California. Another one is the Atalanti Fault. Another one is the Anatolia Fault in Turkey. We have a number of faults in Indonesia that are super shear faults. And these are tremendous problems. They're rare events, but they, they go very quickly. They travel huge distances and they pulverize the rock after they take place. And also they have a tremendous amount of aftershock activity for months on end after the event takes place. What happens though is that there is usually a sonic boom associated with them. A sonic boom takes place at Mach 1.4. If you see the video before this one, we talk about the uh, what happened last year with Indonesia's supersonic uh, super seismo earthquake, the super shear earthquake. Okay, they usually go at over 1.4 Mach, which uh, creates a sonic boom. And that happens at the time of the earthquake, of course. So we have to uh, be aware that they do exist. Science have discovered this is a new kind of souped up earthquake, and it can generate the seismic equivalent of sonic booms. This is uh, recently published on Seeker. The inner work workings of this bizarre and dangerous earthquakes that break seismic sound barrier have now for the first time been confirmed even in laboratory experiments with real rocks. This is what scientists reported in the journal Science, what are called super shear earthquakes. They're strange events in which the rupturing fault breaks faster than certain seismic waves can travel, creating a sort of seismic Mach cone that fires out the end of a fault's rupture zone. The part of the fault that breaks loose allowing two rock surfaces to jerk past each other, that cone and the waves that follow can cause inordinately severe shaking out of portion to the earthquake's magnitude. It's like the seismic waves are propagating along and all of a sudden it steps on the accelerator. This is what Eric Dunham explains. He's an assistant professor and seismological researcher at Stanford University who has done modeling work on super shear waves from the earthquakes, that is. And of course, they're usually very high magnitude. The waves behind the weird phenomena are called shear waves, which normally are relatively slow seismic waves that move over the surface in a manner similar to ocean waves. These are the waves that are felt as rolling and shaking motions after the initial shock of normal earthquakes. The initial shock is another much faster kind of wave that behaves more like pressure waves that make sound in the air. In a super shear earthquake, this is different. The shear waves can create very quickly when a long fault like the San Andreas Fault in California breaks loose faster than the speed shear waves normally travel. And when this happens, the shear wave Mach cone is created that can reach the same speed as the pressure wave this is what the uh, pa uh, paper lead author explains, Francois Passelègue at the uh, Geology Laboratory at École Normale Supérieure in Paris, France. Quote, the main additional hazard due to super shear earthquakes is that there are two big wave arrivals, end quote. Two big wave arrivals. This is what Passelègue told Discovery News. To someone riding out such a quake, the first thing to arrive would be the sharp pressure wave. But instead of the rolling shear waves following it, the powerful super shear Mach cone would arrive and shake the ground in a direction parallel to the fault line, the fault zone that created it. Then soon after, a second shear wave would hit the ground, the ground motions at right angles to the fault zone. This sudden change in the direction of the dominant ground motion is dramatic for buildings. Quickly, super shear quakes luckily appear to have a very rare, to be very rare. This is uh, what the uh, lead scientist says, with only a few ever recorded. 
and uh, folks like the San Andreas in the very populous California are prime candidates for this sort of souped up seismic event. Quote, the other issue is whether this happens only at very large earthquakes. This is what Dunham said. The success of Pasileg's experiment on scale of centimeters suggests otherwise. A moderately strong quake of a magnitude between six and seven ought to be able to produce super shear waves. So when you hear this sonic boom and you, he you feel the tremor, you should immediately duck and cover because a second wave perpendicular to that may be coming and it could be devastating for all, for all buildings, even modern buildings, anti-seismic buildings. Now, uh, researchers have replicated super shear earthquakes in the lab. This is Bob, Bob, from Bob Yurka and Fizz.org. And uh, a team of geologists, researchers working in France, has for the first time recreated the conditions in a lab that lead to the phenomenon known as super shear earthquakes. In their paper published in the Science Journal, researchers describe how they found that compressing granite under certain conditions caused ruptures to propagate fast faster than shear waves leading to an observable super shear event. So in a normal earthquake, seismic waves are generated as a result of faults in the Earth's crust that rupture. At the same time, deep within the Earth, shear waves are generated that also propagate but are not felt to the surface. Shear waves tend to move much faster than seismic waves. Sometimes though, in very rare instances, seismic waves gain a boost in speed and wind up propagating faster than shear waves, and the result is what geologists call a sonic boom type of earthquake that can be far worse than its magnitude would indicate. Super shear earthquakes have been recorded uh, in nature just a few times, but until now have never been reproduced in a lab. To recreate the special conditions that lead to the super shear earthquakes, the researchers subjected slabs of granite to very high pressure, pushing them together while also applying sideways pressure until they slipped against one another, releasing a wave of energy. And this type of experiment used to study various types of earthquake conditions. In this instance, the researchers replicated the experiment 200 times, each time taking careful measurements with acoustic sensors. The team found that by manipulating the pressure exerted, they could induce super shear-like conditions. Their experiment was the first ever to succeed in recreating a super shear earthquake-like event in the lab. And more importantly, it also showed that super shear earthquakes can occur at a much smaller level than researchers had believed. This means, they say, that such earthquakes should be able to occur much more often in the real world. The results obtained by the researchers are not a sign that people should worry because it's quite possible that the conditions in the lab were optimal for the creation of super shear earthquakes, most specifically the presence of smooth, even granite surfaces. This is generally not the case in nature and likely why they occur so seldom in the real world. The researchers suggest it's possible that many super shear earthquakes may happen in nature, but we don't know about them because they occur in sections of faults that don't move, or maybe they occur in areas that are not that populated. This is on fizz.org. I'll leave links below for you for these. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial 
subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media, and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.